Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Welcome to Atomo. Friday, January 13th. Happy Friday. Hopefully Jason Voorhees is not paying you a visit, but maybe he's paying other places a visit. Definitely uh, got some really heady news today for you. Um, not the type of bust uh, that you're probably looking for here, but uh, well, let's take a look at what the, it's almost like it's a shenanigans Friday here of what's going on. You know, so you got some Dingledorf. Yeah, you know, here's the thing where it gets the Republicans. That's <laughs> the Dingledorf stuff that they're doing. Well, at least, um, yeah, so they want to put a bust of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> Honor the leader. Well, yeah. So... And part of the House rules that they negotiated was to allow members to forward bills uh, so it doesn't have to go through some sort of free committee. And, well, get the fine, House Fine Arts Board to in a bust of the Ukrainian president and find a suitable permanent location for the statue in the House side of the U.S. Capitol complex. Oh, God. Well, there's $100 billion to Ukraine, not enough. Like, a million deaths is not enough for you. -E. That's a Dune reference for anyone. Um, yeah, you know. I'm just kind of giving giving my sh head shake here, trying to figure out, you know, what the heck's going on. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so Joe Wilson here, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, historic address to Congress, remember, remembered as a thank you to the people of America, making it possible for Ukraine to resist Putin's murderous aggression. Wow. Um, so I'm trying to unpack you know which of the lizard people like there's the neocon group just wants war guess maybe they're getting kickbacks if war toys get shipped over to the ukraine and you know a billion dollars falls off the truck here and there as it's getting sent over yeah whatever but yeah, you and I, we pay more money for our groceries. We pay more money for our electricity. We pay more money for our heating. Remember, if the government spends it, it's got to be printed somewhere or it has to come in through tax receipts. And that means your taxes go up. Inflation goes up. That's like a tax, too. And you pay for it. You want to pay $12 for your dozen eggs? A buck an egg. Yeah. Wait till uh, we get the... Zimbabwe, you know, third three hundred trillion dollars for a few eggs. Uh, go Google that one. That's uh pretty interesting there. So yeah, if we're throwing money away. I know I'm in Canada. We throw money at it as well. Um, yeah, prices are just going to go up. It's just going to make things harder for everybody. So bringing this forward to the court of public opinion. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Clown world. Clown world. You know, if you're going to put the head at the bottom of the urinal and twinkle on it, then, you know, go right ahead. But then I was looking through um, Lithuania. Uh, there is a little kapoom. I like what this nitwit saying here. It's like, oh, it's Okan's razor because it must have been the uh, must have been Russian terror on yeah European infrastructure. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, thanks Sherlock Holmes. Smart on you. Oh, I realize here that you are a a tech innovator, digital transformer, communicator, advisor to the Minister of Digital Trans Transformation of Ukraine. Did you know that you better be careful there? Uh, it seems like electrical 
objects have been intercepting missiles headed towards Ukraine. You know, just letting you know, seems that you seem to shoot a whole bunch of them down from what your media says, and then next thing you know it, uh, your electrical objects stop the stop the incoming arrivals. So I, I guess that's 100% coverage. So yeah, just be careful with the language there. Uh, and, and Hokem's Razor, that great, uh, what you're actually doing is kind of, actually what you're doing is just making a baseless assumption. That's it. Uh, who knows whether, did they have an accident? Did alleged MI6 come in and James Bond that one? So if we take a look at this, like what would be the geo, like what would be the strategic significance of that? I think what happens is because there's so many things happening with pipelines and energy that now the media is on alert whenever something like this happens. So you have a, a dual pipeline connection up here uh, to the north of Lithuania. So it's the, I believe the Russia junctions is shut down. I'm not sure if the Belarus junction is shut down because sanction is for Russian gas. So you do have gas coming in from a bit from the Poland direction, Belarus definitely, and of course coming down from, I believe, Finland. Here's another map of the area. And you can see the, the Latvia Lithuania connection there. Eventually, you can get that supply coming in through Helsinki. This big one that goes all the way down that's Nord Stream there, Nord Stream 1, Nord Stream 2, going down through the Baltic Sea. Uh, from what I understand, uh, Nord Stream 1 is possible to get up and running. It hasn't been blown up, even though there were three detonations. Uh, just the, I believe the turbine was stuck in Canada and because of the sanctions, the turbine needed to be moved back out to Russia and installed so Nord Stream 1 can be brought back online. But Nord Stream 2 was ready to be certified and, and brought online you know, well before the winter set in in Europe. Uh, so just some notes on that. Uh, Dingledorf here. Tolkien's razor. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're yeah. Well, let's do let's take a look at I just wanted to bring this up. Okay, so if we're considering putting a bust of Zelensky in the House of Government in the Collective West. Just remember that in the German newspaper DZ, uh, I, I sorry my German pronunciation is not good, but the 2014 Minsk Agreement, according to Merkel, was an attempt to buy time for Ukraine. Ukraine used this time to become stronger, as you can see today. Ukraine in 2014, 2015, Ukraine today are not the same. Yes, NATO was spending a lot of time, money on upgrading the Ukrainian army. It was going to it basically at, right at the start. It was the strongest army in Europe. So, no, not so taking Russia out of the equation. If I were to call the if I were to say, if I were to make an assumption, if Ukraine were a part of the EU, uh, then it would have had the largest armed forces. So, well, let's look at another Dingledorf here. So if you just go into the Twitters and you do Victoria Newland Ukraine, you kind of scroll through a bunch of the information here. Really, like it's it's a nice little treasure trove of old uh, information. Um, we've been meddling in Ukraine since Bush. Yeah, we agreed not to expand NATO. True, we we said we're not going to expand NATO. Uh, funded the Azov Battalion. Yeah, true. Uh, even Canada had a hand in that uh, training. Some of the Azov Battalion. Folk, and it was called out even in our legacy newspapers here. Like, oh, you got these uh, right-wing neo-Nazis. 
then they started doing when the conflict started they tried the memory hole a lot of that and just call them well they're a little right wing yeah yeah and our prime minister in canada saying we don't stand with yahtzees and and all that stuff uh during the february trucker protests so so you know if you want to know more information about what happened Keep the Spirit of Maidan Alive by George Soros. Oh, yes. So you basically look through here and uh, you realize that basically you know, Soros, Soros does have a thing against Putin. Uh, you know, so a lot, of the, a lot of the talk here you can see kind of making the, the Casas Belli just saying Putin's mean, believes in displays of force, he flexes his muscle and expects people to fall in line. You know, perhaps he does in some way, maybe with the people he works with, perhaps. I don't know. I don't work with the guy. I hear stories that, well, like any governmental group, or any organization, when you have leadership, then the leadership works in a particular way. Um, well, that doesn't mean Russia can defeat the new Ukraine. See, here he talks about it. The new Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, other, we can help support free and fair elections in May. Basically, you take out, well, when they were having open and free and fair elections in Ukraine. It was pretty close, but usually it swayed on the side of the politicians that were more aligned to Russian side. As, you know, Kharkov being one of the, the biggest cities, I think there's a, you know, Kiev, Lviv tends to go more towards the Western side. We have all the, those old, settlements that have been there for many many generations that are ethnic russian essentially and you know the, the thought that yes russians and ukrainians are the same people essentially but i know you get some ukrainians that will just not like sound of that talk like we are our own now want to move aside well you know now sure if you want to take one half of the country and go your way and the other half wants a different way then you know could have solved this easier back in the day is just create the partition that's kind of what uh luhansk and donetsk and them breaking away after this maidan thing that we see here once this thing happened they realized that you know the new installed government is not going to take lightly to the people who are out in the east of ukraine so so you can see that russia stepped in to protect their people essentially and well now you know you have a now you got a fine situation that we're in right now so i just wanted to bring this forward if you want to debate this, go ahead and debate this. Uh, said Maidan revolution didn't start until they think there was um, uh, Ukraine's need a rule law with judges paid a proper salary to help prevent them from taking bribes. Yeah, just look at the USA and the stuff that's going on <laughs> with judges and uh, shenanigans that are happening. Um, yeah, so uh, that's wishful thinking there. Trying to find the point where da, 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 da. and another appetite for armed conflict. Putin believes and displays a fort. Yes, talk about flexing his muscles. Uh yeah, a group of unarmed citizens rose up and overwhelmed the police force with orders to shoot to kill him. Well, mm. not necessarily. What was happening is there were instigators that was peaceful. Uh, mostly people were were unarmed, except for certain groups seemingly had weapons and came in and started to shoot at the police. So 
things escalated after that. Yeah, you go and you start shooting at police forces, they're going to shoot back and defend themselves. So it didn't take much to light off that powder keg. And then once once that happens and uh, seemingly was more weapons in this unarmed crowd that was able to overwhelm the police force and take over the capital. Huh, interesting. Okay. You now, if they were unarmed, how do you take over the capital with armed police that were with orders to shoot to kill? Hmm? How do you do that? If you're unarmed, throw a whole bunch of bodies at it, but not with, if you take a look at the pictures, the amount of police that were there. So there were, there were uh, protesters that were armed. That's how it was done. So go, go watch the videos. Uh, they're around. Go over to odyssey.com and search for the, um, mm, trying to remember the, the video title now. Name eludes me. Might be in, in here. Uh, Ukraine under fire, something to that effect. Um, yeah, Ukraine on fire. Here you go. So you can take a look at that if you do your Victoria Newland search and get a little bit of information. It's it's nuanced, okay? Like anything geopolitical, it's nuanced. There's people, factions that have what they want on their particular sides. So part of it what we what we do is we look at okay well what's in your best interest and you know, how you live your life my only hope here is that you know, for me living in Canada that we keep a nice Canadian way of life um, you know, but things are changing but we'll keep an eye on it and that's a part of this channel is just to keep this information out there in the space so that we can continue to have conversations with it. So hope you enjoy your Friday and have a great weekend. See you in the next video.